All right. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for continuing to join us throughout the day here at the Litham Partners Fall 2024 Investor Conference. My name is Robert Bloom, Managing Partner of Litham Partners. And during this presentation, we welcome Global Crossing Airlines Group, or simply Global X, ticker symbol of JETMF on the OTCQB. And joining us today from the company is Ryan Gopel, the company's president and chief financial officer. Uh, before I turn it over to uh, Ryan, I just want to remind everyone that management is available for one-on-one -on -one meetings throughout the conference here. If you've not already scheduled your one-on-one -on -one meeting and would like to do so, you can send me an email. That's bloom, B-L-U-M, at lithumpartners.com, or visit the uh, landing page for the conference. That's lithumpartners.com forward slash fall 2024. From there, you can click on the investor registration button to make your one-on-one -on -one selection. So, Ryan, thank you very much for your participation in the uh, conference here today, and the uh, floor is all yours. Great. Thank you very much. And I'm really excited to talk about Global X, which is America's fastest growing charter airline operating the Airbus family of aircraft here in North America. Uh, here's a standard disclaimer language as far as, as, far as it relates to forward-looking statements. Uh, but who we, who we are we? Um, <clears throat> Global X is the fastest growing charter airline in North America. Uh, we're setting the industry standard for on-time performance and reliability. Um, our Q2 revenue was up 83% year over year to 57.5 million. Our Q2 EBITDA, which is the metric is used uh, in measuring airlines, was up materially year over year to $18.7 million. Uh, and when you want to think about uh, where we were in, 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 if you look at the U.S., uh, $30 billion is spent in 2023 on U.S. charter flights. We had 160 million in revenue in 2023. Um, we have a market capitalization as of August 13th of around 35 million. Um, we are basically trusted by government agencies, tour travel operators, professional sports teams, airlines, college and sports teams, meetings and other tour groups to provide supplemental lift. Uh, we provide aircraft on, a, on, a, on an ACMI basis, which I'll go into. Uh, and that's basically our core business. When you look at the market size, U.S. passenger market, airline market in the U.S. is $193 billion a year. We participate in two sub-markets. One is air freight and one is U.S. charter flight market. So it's about $31 billion in charter flights and about $18 billion in air freight. And we participate in both. Where we are in the industry, and I think it's a big part to differentiate us from a scheduled carrier. <clears throat> Most people think airlines, say, for example, Delta, they're scheduled or ACMI, and, and I'll walk through a couple of the risks, and it, it really comes down to risk management. We do not take ticket risk, right? So we sell the whole plane, whether we have one person show up or 150 people show up, it doesn't matter. Uh, we don't take fuel risk. Uh, uh, fuel is passed through to the customer. Uh, obviously, scheduled carriers manage fuel very closely. Uh, crew cost. Uh, a lot of our costs that we incur with the crew get passed through to the customer. Again, this is kind of the fixed cost that a scheduled carrier absorbs. When you think about billings, there's no compensation for delays for scheduled. Our passengers pay by the block out. So they pay us for however long the mission takes to, to complete. And, and that's really what happens. And, and what this means is we tend to run a lower utilization per aircraft per month, which allows us to use mid to late life aircraft, uh, which has a lower capital cost, which is another kind of differentiator for us. When you look at who we are today, uh, keeping in mind, you know, we started in August of 2021, so this is pretty quick. Uh, as of today, we have 18 aircraft. Uh, when you look at, we have four freighters, uh, which we'll talk about, 10 320s, three 321s, and one 319. You look about where we fly, you can see it's pretty much all over the world. Uh, since we started in August of 21, we've operated over 50,000 block hours. We have 150 pilots trained and hired, and we have a key government relationship, which has about eight aircraft dedicated, flying over 1,000 block hours a month. We have key industry certifications, IOSA, which is a, a major safety audit uh, certification, EASA, which allows us to operate in Europe, and Department of Defense, which allows us to operate for the US Department of Defense. If you look at the growth of our fleet, we obviously started with one aircraft in August of 2021. We were at 14 in the end of 2023. Uh, we're targeting 20 by the end of this year. We're at 18 today. Um, 19 feels really secure, 20 is, is pretty close. But that's the goal is 20. But uh, you know we're definitely at 18 today, and we're uh, very active with all those aircraft. And so one of the things we like to talk about is is our focus. Uh, it's really easy in aviation to think about or get distracted by 
different things to do. So we really think about what we're passionate about, what's our economic engine, and what are we gonna be best in the world at? So what we're passionate about is providing forgettable flights. Our customers want to show up on time, want us to show up on time, they want to arrive on time, they want nothing to happen in between. When that happens, it tends to be a forgettable flight. No one remembers a flight that does that. And that's really one of the passions we have within our organization. When we think about what we're going to be the best in the world at, uh, especially in charter, there's so much pre-work that goes into charter to make a charter work well, whether it's catering, whether it's logistics, whether it's the um itinerary, whether it's permitting, all those other things which go into charter. This is really where we've made a big investment in our organization to make us best in the world in that. And that's, I think, a huge differentiator for us in the North American market. And then the way we think of our economic engine, we think of aircraft profit per month. I think of every aircraft as a store or a restaurant, and we effectively try and maximize the profit on each of our aircraft every month. And, that, and that's really the goal. That's our, that's our kind of hedgehog strategy. Our way of staying focused as a company to allow us to make day-to-day -day decisions that I think drive the right results. When you think about all forgettable flights, one of the things we do is we rank our, our captains on a monthly basis on their on-time performance. And uh, we do this really because the captains of our aircraft are kind of like the CEOs of every flight. And they have the best, probably the most influence on whether a plane leaves on time or not. Now, obviously, we manage for safety. These We exclude safety events or any mechanical events. We don't punish them for that. But what we want to do is we want to incentivize our, our, our crews, and we've seen great results. Uh, we've seen huge improvements in our own time performance as our captains really create that sense of urgency needed to get the, get the plane pushed back on time. And I think that's something our customers have really appreciated, and we've really seen that in our, in our kind of growth with our existing customers and our ability to grow new customers. When you think about who we fly, um, currently about 50% of our work is for the US government. It's on a long-term contract with them. Uh, we also do in the, in the sports season, we do a significant amount of collegiate sports. Uh, and then on top of that, we'll do concerts, uh, Department of Defense, uh, and operating for the airlines. For example, in the summer months, we operated for TUI this, uh, with two planes dedicated in Europe, and we expect to grow that next month, uh, next summer as well. So we have a pretty broad base of customers um, most of our stuff is on, you know, six to 12 month contracts and a lot of, a lot of repeat business, which is what we're really, really proud of. Going to the financials, um, <clears throat> continuous improvement. Q2 is a great quarter for us. 57.5 million in revenue, 18 million in EBITDA, operated 6,500 block hours. And a block hour is really, uh, when you, it's really the blocks, you know, when you put on the plane. When you take the blocks off, that's the start. When you put the blocks back on, that's the stop. That's the clock. So we measure everything in block hours, uh, no different than a normal service company would, like a law firm. We bill on that, on that side. Um, averaging 458 hours for the quarter for block hours per aircraft, 18 aircraft in the fleet, and cash and equivalents at the end of the quarter of 10.4. As you can see, everything we want to see in finance is up and to the right, and uh, especially in EBITDA. I think we've reached a real point of inflection where we're seeing significant growth in our EBITDA uh, that generated positive net income for us in Q2. And we expect to kind of continue to grow on that and grow our, uh, and as we grow our fleet, I think we'll see a lot of the incremental aircraft and capacity will drive increased results to the bottom. Material growth, obviously, you know, we've been around for three years, you know, going from 14 to 97 to 160 million. And EBITDA correspondingly went from four to five to 20. And, and to put that in perspective, in Q2, we did 18. So uh, we've seen significant growth in our results. Uh, we think, you know, one of the struggles with the, with the micro cap space is differentiating yourselves through profit, I think is the right way to put it. And our ability, you know, I think to, to stack on profitable quarters is going to be our a, a material change and a, and a real inflection point for the stock. We do have multiple avenues to drive growth. Again, we're gonna expand the fleet. We'll have expanded by 40% by the end of 2024. Uh, improving, in a, you know, driving higher utilization with high margin business. Um, one of our largest competitors did declare bankruptcy. They had about 350 million of annualized revenue, which is on the market for us to go chase. <clears throat> we recently signed a government contract to account for about 50% of the fleet. This is operations for the US government. Uh, that basically guarantees us minimum revenue in hours. 
uh, increasing our expansion into Europe, which is currently only 5% of the fleet. We had two aircraft this year. We think we can do five next year. Uh, and then the man new management team, we, we had a change in management in the first quarter. And, and part of the mandate of the board was eliminating non-core non -core initiatives, just focusing on our core kind of hedgehog business, which I talked about, which really is gonna drive $8 million of cost avoidance in 2024. So investment highlights, uh, fastest growing charter airline in North America, strong financial profile and balance sheet provides runway for growth and transitions to cash flow positive. Uh, we're well positioned to simply increase our market share with the expanded aircraft fleet. We expect that aircraft demand will outpace supply for the next four to five years, putting us in a fantastic position. And again, the new management team is committed to profitability. Um, that's our drive. Uh, you know, if you look at year over year, we went from in Q2, 500,000 of, of EBITDA to 18.7 million, which I think is a trend we, we're looking forward to continuing. And with that, I think that's the, I'll turn it back to you, Robert. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much, Ryan, for that presentation. Just uh, maybe a couple of follow-up questions here because we have a few minutes left here for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me, since, you know, maybe taken, um, you know, you, since your maybe appointment, we'll put it in, in uh, as president in February 24, you know, talk maybe through some of the primary areas of focus, both to drive, uh, you know, growth and, and profitability. I know you've touched on some, but maybe expand there a bit. Yeah, I think, you know, it's been multiple. One is, you know, really looking at non-core initiatives. We had we had several kind of initiatives that, that, that kind of made sense when we launched them. Um, but we realized our core profit was coming from charter and really eliminating a lot of those non-core product projects. So um, that was an initial part. And I think another thing that's made a huge difference over the last six months is really upgrading the team. You know, we've made a really effort, a strong effort to recruit strong operational, professional, experienced people. You know, you're operating 18 aircraft a day. It's not a small operation. It's very complicated. And everything from maintenance to flight ops to HR to finance, I think we've gone through and upgraded the organization at every level. And I think that as much as anything is going to drive kind of, you know, I, I you know, with every business, <clears throat> it's, I call them penny businesses, but every penny counts, every flight counts. Every dollar matters. And, and unless you have the professionals in your organization doing their jobs day to day versus relying on a single person like me, I'm not Superman and, and I can't do it. Um, I'm just so happy with the team I've got in place because they've done an amazing job. You know, you, you talked quite a bit about the, well, you talked about the uh, government contract. Um, you know, to the extent that you can expand on some of that, maybe some of the, the revenue contribution expectations for that. Yeah, so we have eight aircraft dedicated. It's part of the Department of Homeland Security uh, deportation program. Uh, so they are dedicated minimum revenue. There's a kind of a minimum revenue guarantee, um, but we, you know, we provide, uh, they set a schedule every week. We have the eight aircraft dedicated. So eight of the 14 passenger are, are kind of dedicated to this business. Uh, we got three bases set up throughout the United States. Um, it's, you know, you don't have to, spend a lot of time on the news to realize there's a lot of work there. Um, and it's, and it's a, it's a very busy business. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who are designated to go back to where, to kind of where the, their original came from and we're the single largest operator in that space. Okay. Um, you touched on this as well, just a bit, maybe, maybe to expand. Um, yeah, I think it was uh, I Aero Airways uh, sort of ceased operations right in April. Um, you know, what sort of impact has, has that had on the business that you can uh, uh, expand upon there? Well, it, it takes a lot of aircraft out of the market. Um, and I think, also, you know, we picked up some of the government work we picked up with stuff they had been doing. Um, and I think we're going to see definitely in the fall as it, as it relates to college sports. With the conference realignment, the, the demand for air travel is completely different. Um, mm -hmm. But you've taken 30 aircraft out of the market. And uh, we are here with young, relatively young, uh, incredibly experienced pilots, fantastic aircraft, fantastic service offering. Um, it's really served as a differentiation point and allowed us to secure, I think, contracts that, you know, whether it's pricing has increased, improved, but it's also allowed us to be incredibly more efficient uh, in what we chase and what we do. Yep, yep. Um, I have some familiarity with the college uh, charter uh, uh, football programs there. I'll, I'll chat with you offline about. Um, 
All right, you know, Ryan, you know, talking about exchanges here, um, your OTC QB listed, have you talked about uh, uh, uplisting to, to a larger exchange? Yeah, so when you look at our market cap and, and you look at kind of the fundamentals of our, of our business, you know, a lot of people of our peers were valued at four, three to five times EBITDA. Um, you know, if you look at our run rate, we're significantly discounted to that. Um, we have negative shareholder equity, which is about negative 20. Um, I'm not raising money at this price. <clears throat> I don't need to raise money and I need positive shareholder equity to do the uplist. That's the only thing really missing. Okay. Um, so the, the plan is execute, you know, shrink that shareholder equity, hopefully get value for what we're, what we're doing. And uh, eventually we will uplift, you know, we, 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 we can't, we're going to be way too big for this exchange uh, within a year or two. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. You know, maybe closing comments here. What is, what does sort of this company look like in 12 to 24 months? I think what this company looks like is significantly larger. Um, you know, the goal of, we have a platform that is really scalable. Um, you know, securing aircraft at the right price is, is a challenge, but you know, if we add five to six aircraft next year, you know, you're adding 30, 30% to revenue, just straight, you know what I mean? And you, you, you do that two more years, you're, you're, you're looking at double digit revenue growth continually and compounding. And, and we're at the kind of inflection point where a huge percentage of that revenue growth goes straight to the bottom because most of our, all of our fixed costs are covered. So I, I think what you see is a much more, much larger and a much more profitable business. All right. Fantastic. Well, look, thank you very much for uh, the participation uh, in the conference here. I know you have a sort of a busy schedule of one-on-ones, but uh, again, mm -hmm. to anyone out there that, uh, is not already scheduled or one-on-one -on -one and would like to do so, uh, shoot me an email, uh, bloom, B-L-U-M, at lithampartners.com, or again, visit the landing page for the uh, conference uh, website. That's uh, lithampartners.com forward slash fall 2024. Again, click on the investor registration button. I'll look to get you uh, taken care of. So Ryan, once again, thank you so much for your participation today. No, I appreciate it. Conference. Thanks very much. Thank you.